Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the reactions between solid group 1 halides and concentrated sulfuric acid. And this is for the AQA and NXL specs. In a previous video we saw that halogen atoms can take an electron from another species, and I'm showing that here for chlorine. In this reaction, the halogen atom is acting as an oxidizing agent. We saw that halogens at the top of group 7 are more powerful oxidizing agents than those near the bottom. By accepting an electron, the halogen atom is reduced, forming a halide ion. Now a key idea you need to understand is that halide ions can donate their outer electron to another species. And I'm showing you that here for the bromide ion Br-. In this reaction, the halide ion is acting as a reducing agent, as it's donating an electron. Now the halide ions at the bottom of group 7 are more powerful reducing agents than those at the top. I'm showing you here the fluoride ion acting as a reducing agent. The fluoride ion has a small radius, so the outer electrons are relatively close to the nucleus. Also, there's only a small amount of shielding between the nucleus and the outer electrons. So because the outer electrons are strongly attracted to the nucleus, it's relatively difficult for the fluoride ion to lose an electron. This makes the fluoride ion a relatively weak reducing agent. In contrast, the bromide ion has a much greater radius, and there's a greater amount of shielding between the outer electrons and the nucleus. So in the bromide ion, the outer electrons are less attracted to the nucleus compared to the fluoride ion and this makes it easier for the bromide ion to lose an electron. This makes the bromide ion a more powerful reducing agent than the fluoride ion, and this explains why the halide ions near the bottom of group 7 are more powerful reducing agents than those at the top. So in this video, we're looking at the reactions between group 1 halides and concentrated sulfuric acid. Now, the key idea you need to get when looking at these reactions is that as the reducing power of the halides increases, we get different products formed, and those products reflect the different levels of reduction taking place. I'm showing you here the reaction between solid sodium chloride and concentrated sulfuric acid. In this reaction, we make sodium hydrogen sulfate, which is a white solid. We also make hydrogen chloride gas, which forms white fumes in moist air. Now if we look at the oxidation numbers, we can see that they don't change in this reaction. So this tells us that this is not a redox reaction. The chloride ion is a weak reducing agent and cannot reduce the sulphur in the sulfuric acid. So this is simply an acid-base reaction. If we react sodium bromide with concentrated sulfuric acid, then we make several different products. An acid-base reaction makes sodium hydrogen sulfate plus hydrogen bromide gas. A redox reaction also takes place, in which the bromide ion reduces the sulfuric acid, forming sulfur dioxide gas and bromine, which is orange. Looking at the oxidation numbers, we can see that the sulfur has been reduced from plus 6 to plus 4, and the bromide has been oxidised from minus 1 to 0. When we react sodium iodide with concentrated sulfuric acid, an acid-base reaction can take place, and we make sodium hydrogen sulfate plus hydrogen iodide. Now iodide is a powerful reducing agent, so iodide can reduce the sulfur in the sulfuric acid to several different oxidation numbers. The sulfur can be reduced from plus 6 to plus 4, making sulfur dioxide gas. The sulphur can be reduced to zero, making sulphur the element, which is a yellow solid with the formula S8. And finally, the sulphur can be reduced to minus two, forming hydrogen sulphide gas. Hydrogen sulphide gas has a rotten egg smell. I'm showing you here the equation for the formation of hydrogen sulphide, and we can see the sulphur being reduced from plus six to minus two. We can also see the iodide being oxidised from minus 1 to 0. OK, so hopefully now you can describe the reactions of halides with concentrated sulfuric acid.